Hey guys, long time no talk. It's been a while since the last episode. A lot's been going on this year, and um, I hope it's it's already March. I I hope you're having a good uh, start to the year. Um, today's episode is is going to be about uh, overcoming distractions in relationship. Uh, but even if you're uh, single, uh, this uh, episode is going to be talking about uh, self awareness stress management, screen time, social media, and uh, healthy habits. And uh, it's also going to talk about how to communicate uh, with others to get the support that you need, um, whether you're in a relationship or not. So uh, stick around uh, if you're single. Uh, but before we dive into that, and, and this uh, information is, is going to be ma mainly based on a uh, breakout session that I did for our church, uh, Imago Dei uh, Eastside uh, community, uh, uh, just today, uh, a couple months ago, we uh, did the same event uh, at uh, Imago Dei Central. I, I mentioned that in a previous episode of the podcast. Uh, they both went really well, and so if you missed it or you're not local, um, I'm just going to talk about some of the uh, the questions uh, that uh, we, we explored in the breakout sessions, um, or if you didn't have a chance to, to uh, attend uh, my breakout session, uh, we're, we're going to go through it here on the podcast. Uh, I'll copy paste the handout so you could read it uh, so you don't have to take notes. Well, it, it might help to uh, have a pen and pen, uh, uh, paper uh, to, to jot down some notes as you listen, if you can. Um, but but uh, don't worry, I'll I'll make a, a blog post or put it in the show notes uh, somehow. And uh, but before we dive into that, um, re reading two books uh, lately, uh, and uh, just got this one uh, today. Uh, uh, Gabor Mate's uh, "The Myth of Normal: Trauma, Illness, and Healing in a Toxic Culture." Man, um, uh, this uh, quote just at the beginning of it wanted to share this with you. Uh, this book, The Myth of Normal, sets its sights on something far more encompassing. Uh, I have come to believe that behind the entire epidemic of chronic afflictions, mental and physical, that beset our current moment, something is amiss in our culture itself, generating both the rash of ailments we are suffering and, crucially, the ideological blind spots that keep us from seeing our predicament clearly, the better to do something to do about it. These blind spots, prevalent throughout the culture, but endemic to a tragic extent to my own profession, uh, the medical profession he's speaking of, um, keeps us ignorant of the connections that bind our health to our social, emotional lives. I'll say that again. Uh, we're ignorant of the connections that bind our health to our social, emotional lives. Another way of saying it, he goes on, uh, chronic illness, mental or physical, is to a large extent a function or a feature of the way things are, and not just a glitch, a consequence of how we live, not a mysterious aberration. Uh, end quote. The, the way I uh, explore this and kind of process this with uh, patients and clients is um, our are the, the physical symptoms that you're experiencing the, the, is it the symptom or the core problem? And, um, how do our, uh, physical pain, fatigue, physical symptoms, uh, connect with mental and emotional, uh, health? Um, you know, it is our mood, um, and our anxiety, the symptom of, uh, pain, um, uh, or another root issue, um, or is depression and anxiety kind of the core issue and it's playing out in our bodies or in our relationships. Um, he goes on to say this about uh, toxic culture. Um, he, he says, I am using toxic culture to characterize something even broader and more deeply rooted the entire context of social structures, belief systems, assumptions, and values that surround us 
and necessarily pervade every aspect of our lives. Social structures, belief systems, assumptions, and values. And um, so it's, it's neat. I'm excited to dig into his thoughts on um, on how this is affecting our, our physical health. Uh, but belief systems, assumptions, values, um, those affect relationships and um, cause a lot of conflict uh, in marriage. So I, I, I love uh, talking about um, or digging into how your belief systems, your assumptions, your self-talk, um, you know, those things come your, from your family of origin, your values, your differences, and how that um, uh, can be challenging in communication and in relationship. So that's what a little bit what this episode's going to be about. Um, another uh, book, The Power of Change by Craig, Craig Groeschel, Mastering the Habits That Matter Most. Um, uh, I, I really uh, like uh, Craig Groeschel, his leadership podcast. Uh, his his uh, books are, are pretty helpful. And then this one on uh, habits is, is really good so far. He's emphasizing, emphasizing um, we, we do what we do because of who we are uh, here at the start and the importance of our uh, identity and um, exploring why it's difficult to change habits um, and why we can stay stuck in patterns um, and in unhealthy habits. Um, uh, so uh, this episode is about healthy habits as in the context of, of marriage. And uh, let me pull up the, the handout here. So uh, this is on uh, overcoming distractions, practicing self-care, and supporting each other. Um, so uh, here are a few common distractions that couples and families experience. Um, so I'm going to list them out and uh, pick one or two that you think are affecting your connection lately. Um, and uh, so, so here they are. So one, stress. Um, and that can come from physical health uh, issues. Um, that can come from emotional health. Um, stress from um, wrestling with anxiety or depression. Um, uh, responsibilities at, at home with family, with parenting, um, stress from work, um, financial stress, et, et, et cetera. Um, so stress can be distracting. Uh, screen time. Screen time is a huge uh, distraction for many people. I talk about screen time uh, six days a week at least um, with patients and clients. Um, so TV, uh, YouTube, Netflix, video games, uh, uh, other forms of, of screen time. Uh, and then related to that is social media or smartphone use. Um, so social media like Facebook or Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Pinterest, uh, Twitter. I didn't include that on the handout. Um, so is that a distraction for you lately? Um, is work a distraction? So sometimes it's hard to come home and leave work at work. So is work distracting you? Um, parenting and uh, kids' activities. Um, so uh, meal times, bedtimes, morning routine, uh, discipline. Uh, but then as the kids get older, um, soccer practices, sports, um, music, um, other uh, activities. Uh, these, so, um, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on that. Um, hobbies. So, uh, not, not just hobbies of your kids and their kids activities, but your own hobbies, the own thing, uh, your own things that you like, uh, uh, enjoy. How are you doing with that? Um, sleep. I'll say I, I put sleep and like as a distraction, but really is it like a topic of, of, um, conversation or maybe conflict? Um, and difference, um, morning routine and habits, um, uh, evening and bedtime routine and habits. Uh, and then 
is there something else other than what I listed uh, that's a distraction that's affecting your communication uh, uh, connection uh, lately? Um, so uh, like with sleep, um, having different bedtimes, different wake up times, uh, whether that's because of your uh, chronotype, uh, your, um, uh, your circadian rhythm, if you're a morning person uh, or a night owl, uh, is that uh, disconnecting you or are you working shift work and um, having different bedtimes because of that? Um, so pick one or two. So as an exercise, uh, you know, pause, pause the podcast or listen to the podcast and then schedule a time to sit down and talk about uh, what might be distracting you or affecting your connection. So here's just a few uh, prompts. Uh, and uh, you don't have to um, discuss every single one. Uh, some of them are, are kind of similar in different angles to it. Um, but taking turns uh, as a couple to talk about uh, ra rate how you're doing individually with screen time, smartphone, and social media. And so you could do that on a scale of one to 10, um, you know, 10 is great, one, you're terrible, um, or uh, doing really well, you're doing good, doing uh, okay, fair, and then doing poorly, uh, doing badly, screen time, smartphone, and uh, social media. Um, at the time of this recording, we're uh, like halfway through Lent, uh, so you might already be working on uh, healthy limits uh, with these things. So rate how you're doing. Uh, you could also grade yourself at like A through F. Um, and A is not perfection, but A is what you'd like it to be and what would seem healthy to you. Okay. Um, now, uh, rate how you're doing spiritually with self-care and with your energy level. How are you doing spiritually? And when I say that, I, I don't just first mean an or, or only mean how are you doing with quiet time, daily Bible reading, and prayer? That's usually what a lot of folks think uh, when they're asked, how, how are you doing spiritually, um, or are you attending church? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how are you doing with your relationship with God or, or with your faith, um, with uh, the, the hope that you feel, the sense of direction, the the sense of God's presence and closeness in your life or, or direction and clarity. Um, uh, how are you doing uh, in commun spiritual community? Um, maybe uh, maybe you're not attending church. Maybe that, that's a painful uh, thing for you. Uh, but how's your faith? How's your hope uh, lately? Um, and, you know, it's, it's hard to grade that, right? So um, uh Another way to share and talk about it might be to just tell the story about kind of where you're at with that, how you're feeling about your faith, about God uh, and, uh, and church community. Um, how are you doing with self-care? Um, there's a lot that is involved with that. Like we could do a whole episode on self-care. How are you doing with uh, work-life balance and boundaries? Um you know, do, do you even know what self-care is? Um, and uh, the idea of taking care of yourself uh, is your first reaction like frustration and ir irritation. Um, you know, those, how are you feeling? Those, those are uh, can, can be signs of a lot of pressure uh, on you. And how are you doing with energy? And what I mean by that is physical energy. Are you tired, exhausted? Um, are, um, are you mentally and emotionally uh, exhausted? Do you have the energy, uh, the excitement, the passion, uh, the focus uh, to, to do what you want to do? Um, or are you, are you constantly feeling like you're not um, able to do everything that you, you'd like to do? Um, because of low energy. Um, so rate how you're doing. I'm going kind of fast, so just hit pause as needed. Um, another thing with that is um, some some folks 
they're pretty high energy um or at least they're like really productive and they're working really hard uh but they're hard to be around um so you might like how productive and how you get everything done and you know maybe maybe house is super neat and um but are you putting a lot of pressure uh guilt and shame uh on your friends and family uh, that have to work with you or live with you um you you might be fine but um how's everyone else around you uh feeling and doing how's your connection with them uh oh, screensaver okay um so uh th this is the next prompt is without placing blame take turns sharing those 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 areas uh with your partner with your spouse um and then tell them tell them why like in three to five words to describe like how you're feeling about that distraction um and um so here's an example uh when i get distracted with blank it affects our marriage and our connection because i blank um so for example when i get distracted with uh, youtube uh, it affects our marriage and connection because you go to bed and then I stay up for what I th think is going to be just another 30 minutes, but then I end up going down a rabbit hole and st staying up for an hour and a half or two hours, um, which domino effect. I stay up too late. I wake up uh, late or I wake up, but then I'm tired and grumpy and irritable or hit the snooze button. And then I miss out on breakfast with you or I'm grumpy and irritable in the morning and I'm just not at my best and I'm late to work and I don't start out the day or very well or I don't have my quiet time. I don't exercise because I've stayed up too late. So uh, that, that's an example. And, you know, that that sounds kind of negative and and bleak, but that is actually uh, at least the folks that I talk to, um, that's a pretty typical pattern um, of uh, being distracted with screen time. Um, so describe a little bit about um, that. Oh, I forgot to mention, when you have this conversation, try try to be in the right mindset and, and, and ha have the right spirit of uh, this is not about criticizing, uh, the other person. Um, this is not about being super critical and, uh, beating yourself up either. Um, being hard on yourself. Uh, a lot of people, they try to motivate themselves by, um, if I feel guilty and bad enough, then I'll be motivated enough to change. Um, if I make it enough of a problem, uh, but usually, especially with things that are hard to change, You've already been feeling guilty and you know you need to change already. Um, so y y you've already been beating yourself up a, a lot about it. So that, that you don't need necessarily need to do that more. Um, you just need to be get clear about w w what's going on and, and what's hard to kind of overcome um, the, the challenges. And also, um, hopefully, as we talk a little bit, kind of, T tackle the problem in, in a different angle, different way. Um, okay, sorry. Um, another thing to talk about is, um, is being open to hearing the effect of how things have been uh, on your partner. So um, here, here's a prompt is, what is it like for you when I'm distracted? Um, you know, what, what is it like for you when um, we're at dinner and, and I pull out my phone to, to check email or, or to check something on my phone? Um, what is it like for you in the evening when you're watching your thing and, and I'm watching mine? Um, and uh, uh, for a lot of folks, it, it's hard to talk about this. You know, because 
when they confront their spouse, they're they're confronting themselves, right? If they're if they they try to hold them their spouse to a certain standard, then they're also holding themselves to a certain standard. And that can be like screen time. That can be like healthy eating, too. So what a lot of uh, people do is I can't really say anything because I do it too. So I don't say, so we end up not saying anything, not saying what we need needs to be said. And um, so talk about that. Um, and it, it might be hard to bring up something uh, that's needed because you've tried and the other, your, your, your husband or your wife has like not re responded well has been defensive or cross complained and, and been angry and upset and it's caused conflict. And you might be the, the one in your relationship who avoids conflict. Um, you both might avoid conflict. Um, so hopefully this podcast will help with talk, talking about something difficult. Um, and uh, so What's it, what's it like for you when I'm distracted? So, some, it might be hard to, to say out loud, like, I, I feel jealous for your time. I feel uh, rejected. I feel lonely. I feel disconnected. It seems like that, the, that thing that you're, you're watching or reading is more important than me. Um. And, and, and even if you try to talk yourself out of it and convince yourself that it's not true, it can still feel um, true. Um, and, and it doesn't matter if it's true or not. It, you, you don't like it. Um, it's not working for you. Okay. So the, the next thing to talk about is instead of, oh, it, you know, the pause as needed if the, the, this conversation's hard. Um, and sometimes the harder the conversation is, the more important it is, right? Um, like with self-care or healthy limits with screen time, it's w when you don't have time for self-care or start telling yourself that, that's when you need it even more probably. Um, so, don't don't just complain uh don't just criticize or attack it's w what what i would like instead is dot 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 so instead of those distractions or instead of the way we're spending our evenings um what i would like instead is dot 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 so whenever we bring up a complaint or a concern try to bring some some solutions and try to ask for them Try not, um, you know, the, be the best way to have hard conversations is to have them early on before they get so hard, um, where you, you, those, the feelings of hurt and resentment and um, disappointment and broken trust um, don't build up so much. And so it's, um, you know, when you get to the point where you've sandbagged, collected all the, the hurts and the slights and the resentments and bitterness, you get so fed up and so tired, you're like frustrated and angry. And then it's like hurtful. It hurts when it comes out um, and, or more intense um, than it would be when, if you could like talk about it consistently and make, and when it's small um, and not get to the point where you're so frustrated that you're like demanding and uh, intimidating and, um, and hurting your spouse because you're hurting um but inviting them or asking them uh for for what you want and what you need so what i would like it, it instead is um next prompt what would you like us to do as a couple to cut down on distraction so uh, i didn't mention this earlier sometimes as you explore this in your life it helps to sort out uh, yours, mine, and ours. So there's your things that distract you or get you distracted. 
and disconnect us. There's my things that I know I do and taking responsibility and owning up. Like you're not the only bad, bad guy. You're not the only one who has this problem. I have my th thing too, yours, mine. And then what is our thing that is distracting us from the most important things in life? Um, and um, uh, so, so uh, you know, your things, those are the things that you're, you're responsible for. Uh, I can't control that, um, but let me know how I can help with that. There's my things. Um, and then, but how are we doing with the things that distract us, like um, watching TV? Um, uh, are we watching too much TV? Are we giving too much time uh, to that? Um, so what, what would you like us to do? Now, here's another thing that can help this conversation is, you know, it's hard to break habits. You might not be confident. You, you, you might know like, yeah, we probably should do that. Uh, but if you are watching uh, two to four or five hours of TV a night, most nights or every night, you're, you're realistically not probably going to go from four hours of TV a night down to zero. Um, it's kind of like um, going from e uh, eating out four or five times a, a, a week down to zero. Um, uh, e you know, you might be able to do that for a couple days or a couple weeks, um, but until you kind of build that muscle um, and build other ha uh, other healthy habits, um, it, it's uh, it's really difficult um, to, to, to make those hard changes. Um, so try to set realistic uh, goals. Um, discuss, discuss what you want or need to do more and what you want or need to do less. Um, so um, instead of just stopping something, it can help to talk about like, well, instead of Netflix, like what would you like to do more? Um, you know, as the weather gets better, ho hopefully um, you don't uh, just cross the finish line of finishing work and get home and then you're done and then just sit and watch TV. Um, maybe as the weather gets better, you can spend a little bit more time, get a little more active um, or connect with others more. Uh, so think about that. What, what do you want or need to do more? What, are, what do you want or need to do less? Um, and then share your readiness and confidence to make changes. So good idea, but, um, I, I think it's the principle of considering the cost or counting the cost before you commit to a change or say that you're going to work on something is really think about, um, not just what you want to change, but how are we going to change this? How are we going to be? set yourself up for success. Um, and um, so what would help me feel more ready to make this change? Um, what would help me feel more confident? As a coach, sometimes we, we, I ask folks to rate how confident they are with the plan uh, that they're going to do what they say they're going to do between appointments. And if you're like, if your confidence is like a five out of 10, you're not confident enough. That's like a coin flip, whether or not you're going to be successful. Um, so setting a realistic goal where you're at least, at least seven, preferably eight or higher confidence that yes, I, I can do that. And I will do that. Um, and, uh, the, the more, the more confident you are, the more motivated, uh, you are, um, and uh, yeah, the more ready you are to make the changes that, that you want to make. Uh, next question, what will help you individually with distraction? Um, so th this is getting back to like, what are we going to do? But then what are you, what are you going to do? Um, uh, oh, I forgot to mention. So sometimes if you're cut, wanting to cut down on screen time or, um, things that distract you, it can be helpful to think of, well, what are healthy self-care things? What are healthy, uh, 
things to uh, grow and improve uh, in my life. And um, what do you want to do this month to cut down on distraction? So, um, so some folks, when I talk with them, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this thing. Like I'm going to go to the gym um, or I'm going to start walking my dog or, but then the, the, the excuse or the reason they're not doing that is that like the, it's cold and rainy and snowing. Um, which was a legit uh, reason to postpone. Um, but then uh, the longer you put something off, the more practice you have at, at procrastinating um, and the, the more stuck you can feel. So as you think about distraction in your life and self-care, um, definitely encourage you to think of something that you can do, like start doing today. Uh, even if preparation is, is like the next step, start working on something this week. Um, and, and as much as possible, take action, uh, on it. Okay. Oh, um, what do you want to, what do you want to set limits on or stop doing, uh, this month, this week? Okay. Um, oh, uh, I, I just mentioned this, skipped ahead. What healthy habit or self-care practice do you want to do, be more consistent with or start? One, one uh, healthy habit that I've started is uh, using my uh, call map more consistently and, and doing a little journal. It has like a check-in and, you know, you pick your emoji for how you're feeling and then you type in a few notes about, well, why do I feel that way? Um, and uh, yeah, that's been fun. Um have been listening to uh devotional or watching uh bible studies on uh, right now media and uh so definitely um uh replacing social media with uh those types of things uh has been something uh that's been helpful next question what would you like to give more focus time and energy to so uh i didn't i don't think i've mentioned this uh I, I did a couple breakouts today, so I don't remember if I just I shared this uh, earlier today or, or just now, um, but it can help to think about areas of your life, um, the, the green areas of your life, the yellow areas of your life, and the red areas of your life. Um, and uh, um, so the, the green areas are the areas that are solid and um, that you're, are healthy and thriving. The yellow areas are the areas that you're you're just doing okay or they're fine, uh, but if you gave a little more focus, time, and energy to them, then it would really grow and become something strong um, and healthy in your life. Those are also the, the areas of your life where if you neglect it or don't maintain it and just take it for granted that you're doing fine, it might slip into the, the orange or the red area. Uh, of your life or condition. And then the red areas of your life are the areas of your life that are um, a problem, that need healing, um, that are broken, that are off track, uh, that don't align with your values and, and your faith, um, that are hurting you personally or hurting your family um, or your marriage. And um, so sometimes, you know, talk checking in and talking about like healthy habits and self-care and supporting each other um it, it's a, a, a function of talking about the yellow and green areas like affirming and encouraging each other and showing appreciation for for that but um sometimes if you're having trouble talking about um th this uh, distraction and giving each other feedback without it being def feeling defensive um, or irritated, it could be that you're hurting um, and these there's unaddressed red areas of your life uh, that you, like you, you can't feel vulnerable or, or trust because you're, um, the, there, there's um, issues that need to be repaired. Um, and just uh, encourage you that, you know, the soft startup of just talking about like, this is where I'm stressed or, or this is w where I'd like to do better. It might be kind of a gentle way to talk about like, and you know what, like, 
I just, I need to be uh, more honest and open up and say like, um, like, um, you know, I have some unforgiveness, I have resentments or, um, like I'm really upset or, um, you know, uh, so if you're, if you, ha if you have any offenses that you've been holding on to, um, it might, uh, help to clear the air. Um, and so hopefully you can do that on your own. Um, if, if that gets too hard, it might be helpful to, to ask for some help for some, for, from some friends, some marriage mentors, um, maybe some pastoral, uh, staff, uh, some leaders at your church, um, or a small group leader. Um, uh, if you have, uh, marriage coaches, uh, at your church, uh, that can help marriage mentors, um, meeting with a Christian counselor or a couples counselor or a couples therapist, uh, can also help if, uh, if when you try to talk about these things, it makes you feel worse and not better. Uh, so the goal of this handout, um, or, uh, th this topic is, do I feel less alone? Do I feel more supported? Do I feel more understood? Do I feel closer? Uh, do I feel, if not healthier already, but do like, do I feel more hopeful and confident that, that I'm not alone in wanting to work on and improve our marriage through improving the way we spend our time, the way, you know, what we're focusing on and prioritizing in our lives. Um, do I feel, uh, yeah, just, uh, more cared for because you understand what's important to me and that's included. You're being mindful and considerate of the things that I need in our relationship. Um, the, yeah. So that's, boy, that was a long way of saying, slow down and take the time to be self-aware, but then also share what I need or want to give more focus and time and energy to. And if you're struggling, if you're struggling with energy, if you're overwhelmed, if you're burnt out, if you feel like the, the way things are going at home, like who's doing what with house chores and cleaning and cooking and taking care of the, the you know, uh, picking up the kids. Um, if that needs to be renegotiated, then be brave and, and, and talk about it. If you've gotten through all these questions by now, <laughs> Like you're, you're, you're already like being more open and transparent you, and brave. So you might as well go, go for it and talk about what's really going on, what you really need to talk to. Don't just go through the motions and play around. Um, but uh, I'm sorry if that came across, I, I shouldn't have said it so uh, starkly. Um, no, no blame, no shame, no judgment. Um, I'm just... Um, uh, I just want to encourage you to, to, to have the hard conversations. Um, so, you know, it, it's so uh, damaging to go, to go months and years with resentment. And then by the time you like tr finally have had it to try to talk about it, it, it it's really hard. Um, and some, couples they just don't think they can do it and it's really sad they lose hope um and being overwhelmed constantly uh, um feeling alone um feeling misunderstood feeling unloved it can really like harden your heart or just drain you of any warmth and caring and, and love for your partner you know, and a lot of young couples, they, you, you would never imagine or realize or, or think that you could get to that point. And it's, and so sometimes you get to that point with catastrophic, sudden, like betrayals and big destructive choices, like with addiction or betrayal that just ruin your trust. It's like a, a wrecking ball that comes through and smashes your home and smashes your peace. Um, and the picture of the life that you, you have or wanted, but 
uh, for I would say most couples, it's the slow disconnection and erosion of that connection. Um, it's the little hurts and slights and disrespect and turning away from each other and turning towards other things. Um, you know, like uh, being rude or inconsiderate or selfish. It's those small things that, that get people into a negative pattern um, that, that destroy marriages. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so we're, we're, this, this podcast is to avoid that. Um, help you guys avoid that. Which area, if we focus on in the next month, will improve our connection or marriage. So um, don't, don't just, like I said, just don't just complain and blame, but try to end and focus on the solutions and, and positives. And so um, I think uh, it, it, uh, we, I've talked about this a lot. Um, our, our feelings point to what we need. Uh, Tristan Collins, her books, why emotions matter, her, you know, her, her books are uh, one of the big ideas is our emotions are a dashboard, uh, like in indicator lights, uh, red flashing lights, you know, empty or check engine. Um, and I think Ryan holiday, uh, it's on the, on the to read list. Right. But the obstacle is the way it's like so clear, um, is okay. Th this isn't working. This is broken or maybe it's not broken, but I don't like the way this is heading. So then what do we do? Um, hopefully you can slow down and um, stay connected through this, this hard, these hard conversations, hopefully, or maybe, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's hard. Um, it doesn't have to be hard. It can just be like, yeah, this is just something that we help each other with. This is something that we check in with each other uh, about because we love each other and we're not trying to put each other put each other down we're trying to lift each other up and encourage each other and support each other i'm not trying to parent you or control you i'm coming alongside you um, to help you because i know it's this is hard for me too distraction is hard for me too we're different so we have different struggles but i'm not better than you because I have my, you have your things, um, and I have mine. Um, we're just different. Oh, uh, t today, uh, uh, I said a phrase I, I hadn't said before in responding to a question is, um, our differences are, can be difficult, but they don't have to be deal breakers. Um, so, so sometimes, uh, our differences can, the, the frustration and the difficulty can get so high that we can, you can start to tell yourself that we're incompatible and lose hope or start to tell yourself that like we're so incompatible. Uh, and then all the other things that go along with that can be like, you're, you're selfish. You don't care. Um, you're never going to change. Um, this is too hard. This is too painful. Um, we can't continue. You know, you can go down that that um, destructive vicious cycle um, or downward spiral. Um, but differences don't are difficult, but they don't have to be deal breakers. They don't have to destroy you. Very and uh, you know you've heard this uh, before that like our, our like opposites attract and our differences are what um is attract uh, often um what we think is missing and what will like complete us or make us happy um but those very same things that are attractive are the things that can irritate um, um us uh, about our spouse so you have to click you know one way to not be overwhelmed by that is to come to agreement and to cl and clear the air and when when we try to debate um, and make our partner wrong then it's natural for them to be defensive um, so as you're going through this try not to like make a case 
maybe maybe you've felt that you've had to make a case to get for what you want. Maybe you feel like you've had to fight for what you want. And I, I, I shouldn't say feel like you have, maybe you have, maybe that's been a reality. And so maybe before you can even come to agreements about healthy habits and what needs to change with distraction, sometimes you have to talk about the history, your history of how you communicate about things and what hasn't worked and how, what changes you need to make with communication and receiving input from each other. Okay. Maybe that's another podcast. Um, okay. Oh, last, last question. Discuss how to support, and encourage each other. And so there might be things that your spouse has said, or um, whether it's their tone of voice or the timing of when they say it or how they say it, that even if they're pure of heart, and full of love and grace and patience and kindness, you just, it just pushes your button and it causes hurt or shame or, um, or anger. Um, just because it's a, your history, it's, it's been associated with hard conversations or, or conflict and fights. And so, um, you know, to, Try not to get so stuck on, I'm not, I'm doing nothing wrong and it's my right to say something. So um, a lot of conflict in marriage isn't, is, is exerting your rights instead of doing the mutual submission and being wise in, yes, I have the right to say it, or I'm, it's, I'm saying something true, but my spouse isn't responding well to it. Maybe I, I, I can try something else for the sake, for their sake, for their benefit and for the benefit or, of our relationship. Um, and um, now usually there's someone in, in a couple where like what I just said is um, like difficult to hear because they're like, wait, can't be soft on the truth. Tell each other the truth. How could, how could telling the truth ever be wrong? It's always right. Um, there's there's timing. There's wisdom. There's different ways to confront people. Uh, even Jesus didn't formulaically speak truth or, or tell truth and confront people in the same way. He was really wise, and he knew just the right way to talk to people. And sometimes even when he told people the truth, they still went away sad. They still disagreed. They, they still rejected him. Um, so if you, if you, if you want a different outcome for your marriage and the conversations and conflict, be open and, and be humble and be willing to change your approach. And, um, yeah. Uh, this is why I like counseling is because I wish I could have a conversation and, and, and hear if you have any questions or pushback on what I just shared, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, fundamentally, the most important person's opinion and, and what works in communication is your spouse and, uh, you know, what you guys work out together, um, is, is, is the key. To, to being healthy um, and, and uh, you know, being strong and growing together uh, in this area. So discuss how to support each other, how to encourage each other. Again, don't just complain and talk about what doesn't work. Talk about like, the, um, like, I know, uh, I know you care. I know it's good intentions. I know you're trying to help, uh, but that hurts. I, that's hard for me to hear. I feel shamed. Even if you're not intending to shame me, I feel shamed. That that's my thing. So this is, you know, um, it doesn't work for me. You know, don't get into a debate about that's wrong the way you said that. Um, well, if you've given your spouse feedback like 10, 20, 100 times that something doesn't work for you and they continue to do that, then yeah, then what they're doing is wrong. Um, and uh, the 
So trying to come to agreements. And now th this is a challenge where we've never done this before. We've never communicated this way before. This is new. Um, so sometimes you'll come to an agreement. Let's give this a try. It's an experiment. Let's try this this week uh, on, uh, you know, if you're trying to make a change with screen time or smartphone, this is what I'm going to try to do better. Um, like, oh, okay, this is what you're trying to do better. This is what we are trying to do better. Let's, at the end of the week, let's check in and see how we're doing and talk about it. Um, or this is what we're going to do this month and see how we do. Um, and uh, so hopefully that'll help. All right, guys, the, I'm going to send, uh, or send, I'm going to put a link uh, in the show notes about uh, this, uh, um, the, the series of, of questions and prompts, and I hope it will be helpful to, to you this year. And thanks for listening. Please share this podcast if you uh, know someone who might benefit from it. And uh, would love if you uh, have any topics that you think would be helpful um, to, for me to do pod, uh, podcast episodes. So uh, this, this month, end of this month, is the two-year anniversary uh, of the podcast. So it's been fun. Uh, I, I, I kind of go up and down with with what it's supposed to look like not supposed to look like um uh what what it could be and so part of me is thinking about like doing like a uh episode kind of like a chapter summary of some of the stuff i'm reading as a way of kind of processing uh the the material so let me know if you might be interested in that all right guys until next time take care God bless you.